welcome back to Buckle Up. My name's Rob Wilson and this is a BMW X2. Okay, so if you're a long time viewer of Buckle Up, you'll know that we don't like crossovers. We especially don't like coupe styled crossovers. But this one has big wheels and M badges on it, so just maybe this is something a little bit different. But we'll start at the front because um, it's typical BMW, and by that I mean it has kidney grills. And these ones are of a reasonably acceptable size. It's not like the 4 Series or the XM or the new 7 Series or most of the things that have come out in the past sort of 12 months. This is an acceptable size. I can live with this. Um, it's got the BMW LED lights, which you know uh, because they'll blind you when you're driving home on, uh, on a night. Um, it's got the fog lights because this is a pre-facelift car. It does actually have vents and they do things. It's incredible on a crossover. This one, I can stick my hand all the way down and it goes and obviously funnels air around the outside of the wheel. This one seems to go into some sort of extra intercooler thing because quite a powerful engine under the bonnet. And uh, then apart from that, it's just sort of standard crossoveriness. I don't actually dislike the look of this car. Um, which is quite a statement for me because, again, if you've watched any previous Buckle Up videos, I seem to have developed a sort of pattern of declaring war on BMW over the past sort of 12 months. But we'll see if this can change my mind. Um, so what we'll do now is go and look at the side and see what's going on there. Okay then, so here we are at the side of the X2 and we can see straight away that it's got the uh, BMW LED badge reminding us that A, it's a BMW and B, it's got those LEDs. Secondly, we've got huge, huge 20 inch M Sport wheels with M Sport brakes behind. And just in case you forgot, another M badge. You've also got a um, wheel coloured it's this thing that BMW do so that instead of being black in sporty models it matches the wheels see isn't that lovely mmm right uh, nothing else much happening here apart from you've got tinted glass until you get to this point where you find the world's largest fuel filler cap this is this is this is an air brake this is ridiculous this is the size of a small state and you also get another BMW badge, which I don't necessarily have a problem with it being there. However, it isn't straight. It's off to one side and that's annoying me. And it's not even in line with this either, because if it was doing that, it'd be more of an angle. So they need to decide what they're doing because that's annoying me. But we'll, 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 we'll look at, we'll forget about that for now. We'll forget about this minor detail and we'll look at the back and see what's going on there. Okay, so we're now at the back and uh, first things to note is it's surprisingly conservative for a BMW. Nothing that's overly offensive, just sort of standard crossover. It's got an X2 badge there to let you know what model it is. It's got a badge here that says M and then it says 35i, which means it's got a three and a half litre engine. Um, and it's actually got proper exhausts and if I was Matt Watson I'd put a twig in there but I'm not thankfully so we'll move on and talk about the boot um, now you will notice that this isn't like the X4 and the X6 with the coupe swoopy thing that looks absolutely awful in my opinion so we'll see what effect that has on the boot when we open it up and surprisingly before you start in the comments it's not that bad. It, it doesn't look that big when you initially open it, but it has a false floor under which there is about, I reckon you could get Jasper in there. We're not gonna try it, but I reckon you could. It's 470 liters, which I know means absolutely nothing to anyone. So what you basically need to know is it's only 5% smaller than the X1, which is pretty good considering the size difference between the two cars. If you fold down, the rear seats, 1,355 litres. Again, it means nothing to anybody, but those seats fold reasonably flat when you've got the false floor in space, which means you can push items all the way through 
and the rear seats fold 40, 40, 20. So if you wanted to go skiing or put a Christmas tree in the back, you can fold the middle seat down with keeping the two outer seats in place. In terms of features back here, you do have a 12 volt socket over here. You've got some nice little netting um, in which this car has some binoculars and a road map. And uh, you've got tethering points on either side as well. So plenty of places to store stuff. Things I don't like, the boot lip is too high. And um, even with the boot floor, you know, the raised floor in place, there's still a lip and I just, you could just engineer that better and have a slightly bigger boot lid, but that's about it. So um, I'll close the electronically powered tailgate and we'll move into the back seats. Oh, okie dokie. In the back seats of the X2. I'll start off by saying that I am a tall gangly freak. I'm six foot two, so unless you're six foot two, ignore everything I'm about to say. Um, leg room, I can, I, I can get my legs behind the seat, but they are like pushing into it. This is in my driving position. If you have Jasper here, you could play tennis back here, but we don't, we have me, so it's fine. I would want to sit like this. Um, which uh, I would be fine with, I guess, but yeah. Um, these seats are in the reclined position um, and my head still does this, which is annoying, but that happens in every car. So again, ignore everything I'm saying if you're not six foot tall. You've got lots of interesting things back here, such as ambient lighting on the doors. Oof, some nice, perforated leather seats m sport seat belts with this m colored stitching mm. and um, these sport seats although they're sport seats uh, as in uh, quite hugging and no proper headrest you can see round them so that's good uh, you're not going to feel too sick sat behind them in terms of like practical things you've got some pockets on the back of the seats which are pretty good this one has a map in it second map. The door pockets are enormous, you can definitely fit a 750 milliliter bottle of water. You have um, some nice speakers in the middle of the armrest. Um, you have cup holders as is standard on pretty much all BMWs. You've got some chargers, USB-C's down here and below your aircon vents. You have Isofix as well on both sides, but what I'm gonna try and do is, uh, I can't get my foot, it's sit in the middle. I can't actually get my foot through that. There we go. No. Um, so, um, yeah, those are the back seats. Uh, oh, if you do want to sit in the middle, your seat belt's up on the ceiling and it's like one of those, like that. Um, but uh, apart from that, everything's sort of fairly standard. So what I'll do now is move into the front where I have head and leg room. Oh. Right. So here we are in the front seats of the X2, and um, where should we start? We'll start with the center console. So you've got a 10.25 inch screen, which you can do touch with your hands, or you can use the iDrive wheel. Um, it doesn't have the gesture control on it like you see on some of the other ones, which is good, because I think that's probably the most stupid feature that's available in cars nowadays. Below that, you have the air vents, CD slot, and uh, radio settings, all physical buttons, uh, which I like. And then you've got your climate controls. Again, all physical buttons, heated seat, physical buttons. This is how cars should be. And then down here, you've got, as I said, your iDrive controls. I'm not gonna go into all that because I'm pretty sure most people know how iDrive works now. It's It's been around for 20, odd years. You do have your like drive mode selector down here. So you've got like sport, comfort and eco pro and all that sort of stuff. 
uh, and then sort of on your steering wheel you've got your cruise control bits and bobs on this side and your radio control bits and bobs on that side you have like this in between digital dials i guess is the way i could explain it uh, right in front of you so it is there are dials there but they're screens so it's not like it can't be configured like the the full system that you get on uh, the brand new BMWs now where the rev counter somehow goes anti-clockwise. So I much prefer this because that's conventional uh, and sensible. In terms of material quality, it is lovely every single place in this car. There are no horrible scratchy plastics everywhere. It's all soft touch. Even this gloss stuff feels nice. Uh, steering wheel, all the touch points are really nice the quality is top tier i can't complain about that at all um in terms of storage you have down here some cup holders hidden behind there you have an armresty thing under which there's like a, a a bin but it's got a usb c port in it if you set this armrest back and lift it open there is a phone wireless charging the bob thing and um it'll while it'll fit my phone in um it won't fit the the big iphones or the big galaxy note things i don't know anything about technology wait what's this the camera angles changed oh no oh it's okay we're talking about the sunroof oh my god isn't that amazing and it's got one of those little fly catcher things so it's basically convertible as well as being an off-road a sports car and a hatchback so there you go. I'll close that up and then I think what we'll do, um, because I'm getting quite excitable, is um, take it for a drive. Okay then, so here we are in the BMW X2 M35i. And the first thing I'm going to do is pull out of this junction. Oh my... <laughs> well, that's... A substantial amount of speed. <laughs> That's silly. How does it do that? That is a full hot hatch level of speed. So just just to give you some of the stats, that's um, not 60 in 4.9 seconds from a uh, two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine producing 302 horsepower and 332 foot-pounds of torque, which is a lot. Um, I think it's probably around the same figure that a Golf R produces. Except this isn't a Golf R, it's a crossover. So obviously with it being a crossover, it's taller. But you don't necessarily feel like you sat that high up when you're driving it, the seat goes quite low, which is good for me because it means I feel like I've got more headroom. That sunroof definitely helps with adding light into the cabin as well. Here we go again. So even though this is um, like a, it's been breathed upon by M, the M division, it isn't a full M car. So it still has a uh, eight speed torque converter automatic gearbox. It doesn't have the full sort of dual clutch seven speeds that uh, the proper M cars have. Although saying that, it's very quick, it's very smooth. And when you put your foot down, it doesn't take very long to change down. Um, and kick down, so uh, that's pretty good. Um, what else is there to talk about? Oh yeah, because this is a M1, uh, the, the car has uh, been lowered um, by 10 millimeters, uh, and that, coupled with the 20 inch wheels, makes for a interesting ride uh, quality experience. It's, it's firm and it doesn't feel roly-poly like you would expect uh, on a tall car. Um, but it does mean that over bumps it's, um, well let's just say 
It's not the most comfortable car I've ever been in. Beans. <laughs> that doesn't get boring. Neither does the noise that it makes. That's very exciting, especially for a crossover. Um, so it has got X drive, but it's front biased four wheel drive. So uh, most of the time it is gonna be front wheel drive. Power will only go to the rear when it absolutely needs to, um, but the computers all figure that out anyway. Uh, and because it's mainly front biased, it does actually have a, a limited slip diff at the front. Um, so it stops, you know, the torque just pulling the car into a tree. Um, which, you know, is what the old Focus RS used to do and stuff like that. Um, but it's not like normal BMWs where you can definitely feel it being pushed from the back rather than pulled from the front. This is definitely a pulled from the front sort of experience. <laughs> brakes uh, they work um, as I just demonstrated they they feel uh, they're very sharp and um, but they're not like unnecessarily sharp like other cars that I've been in there is still like a progressive amount of braking that you can do like I'm doing now to pull up behind this Dacia Duster and then That doesn't get boring. I want to keep doing that all day. <laughs> Let's see what the handling's like, shall we? We'll go up down here around some more twisty roads. Oh, I'm going to have to stop doing that or I'm going to get a speeding ticket. Okay. Calm down. Calm down. Like all BMWs, it has quite a fat steering wheel, although it doesn't see, it's not unnecessarily fat, it's easy to hold on to. And um, when I'm turning the wheel, it, it, it does grip and it, <laughs> it does feel unnecessarily um, capable at uh, doing this sort of thing. It's a bit silly, really. I do like having the heads-up display though, that's quite nice. It's got like what the speed limit is, where you're driving and then what you're sort of going at. And when you've got the sat-nav dialed in, it does that as well. Uh, like it'll tell you that you need to go that way, this way, whichever way, which I like. So you do have paddles, although um, the 8-speed torque converter is good enough that you don't really need to use them. Um, although I can, they're actually very quick at changing down. That's just gone down into third. Oi! <laughs> you forget just how quickly this thing gathers speed. Yeah. But when it's in um, comfort, it kicks down fast enough anyway, so it's fine. So if I just pull away at a normal speed rather than the, a million miles an hour, so you can f you can hear how long it holds onto gears for as well, and that's not even in sport. So that's quite impressive. It's obviously definitely been geared towards sportier driving, which is nice to see because normally, obviously, crossovers are just geared towards being as economical as possible. Speaking of economy. Um, this car is averaging, um, not on the run I've just done, but in general, um, less than 30 miles to the gallon, which isn't good. Um, 
but I can forgive it because it, it makes a nice noise and it goes quickly. <laughs> um, my GR Yaris, which is actually probably fairly similar in terms of performance to this, uh, can do uh, 30 miles to the gallon, so something similar to this. Um, but you have to remember that this is probably, I think, about 1.6 tonnes, and the Yaris is less than 1.3 tonnes. So it does disguise its weight well, um, and I'm not going to hold any of that against it really because I'm enjoying it so much. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> I like the noises it makes. I like how quickly it goes and it steers and handles and brakes like a hot hatch. I can't I can't can't complain about any of that at all. So obviously it grips really well and to help with that um, it does have bolsters which I can play around with on this sort of switch down here. That is the only electronic part of the seats though. Um, it's height adjustable manually, uh, it moves back and forwards manually. Um, I suppose that's a slight downside, um, manual seats, and there's no adaptive cruise control as standard. I believe it is an option, but really, for how much this car costs. I'll give you three seconds to guess how much it costs. No, it's 46,000 pounds. Yes, 46,000 pounds. That's a lot of money. But it goes pop and bang, so <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> Stop it! Stop making good noises and going quickly, for God's sake, man. You're 12 years old, I swear. Jesus. Is that an X3 I see in front of me? How does this sort of compare? In terms of, like, where I'm sat, I feel like I'm probably at the same sort of height as him. But I suspect this goes a hell of a lot quicker than that one, because that's a diesel. Right, so I think that's enough driving too quickly and uh, we'll pull over and I'll do a conclusion. Right, okie doke then, that, that's, um, that was a fun drive, wasn't it? Um, so, to conclude, has it converted me to crossovers? No, because my DNA and brain structure is never going to be excited by this kind of shape of car. It's always going to prefer a hot hatch or a saloon or a coupe. But for a crossover this is very good I'm, I'm not talking about like practicality wise i don't care about practicality i care about it going pop and bang and and fast and handling well in terms of sportiness i don't think you can beat this uh crossover wise if you think that it can be beaten tell me what can beat it and i'll try and get one to drive but as far as i'm concerned that is peak sporty crossover and I enjoyed it. Okay then, so um, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to go down below and give it a like. Um, you can also comment down there if you've got anything to say, but most importantly, hit the big red subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed. You can also hit the little bell notification um, and then you'll get notified when a new video goes live. 
and um, we've also got all of our social media links down there so uh, go and check those out and we've got a patreon link and um, so you can go and give us some money if you want to and we very much appreciate that um, we also have merch look at this stylish cool jumper don't you want one yes you do and you can find the link also down there in the description um, so thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time Did it, 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 did it,